All right, welcome aboard to Gar Capital in our weekly recap and preview. My name is Carlos Garcia. I'm the founder and CEO of Gar Capital. Great to have you here, serving and trading since 2014, 10 years now. If you are new to the channel, welcome to Gar Capital, where we talk about the stock market, macroeconomics, commodities, and day trading setups. If you like what you're watching, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on notifications for future video content. Glad to be with you. All right, so end of October, a new min new month, excuse me, begins uh, November 1st on Friday. So seasonally speaking, this is very bullish. So, you know, I know we're just, what, almost a week away from the presidential election, which also has senators and Congress and everything like that. We do expect a strong November and December in stocks, seasonally speaking. So we're ready for any and all opportunities. I'm going to do a podcast on regards to the election. That will be posted next week as we get ready for the actual election day on Tuesday. I don't know if we'll get the results that same night, but we'll be watching the markets throughout the evening. Well, when we get closer to the actual election day, we'll kind of go over exactly what we're going to be watching and what we're looking for on that podcast. Speaking of podcasts, I went ahead and put a new one up today. Make sure to follow us on Spotify, Apple, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Search Gar Capital. We did the 10-year anniversary podcast, 10 lessons that I have learned as a business owner doing this for 10 years. Uh, a lot of things to talk about emotionally inside, also talking about money, also talking about things to look for and the lessons that I wish I learned 10 years ago. Uh, all right, so let's go over the week's results and uh, let's get started on our weekly preview and review. But first, the review. So here we go. Options trading. Six for six this week. That is great. Uh, SLV silver calls. That was Monday morning. We also hit Pelantir uh, 44 calls. Those things also hit in the money as it hit a new all-time high on Friday. Hit as high as 115%. Meta calls. Now that one was a hard hold. That I know for a fact because we were all talking about it. It finally turned around and then we caught it. Hit as high as 85 uh, percent. Uh, that is incorrect. It was actually puts, so not calls. I want to go. I have to go ahead and fix that. Uh, but Nvidia 145 calls. We hit that as well. 47 percent. XLF puts. We also hit. And see that one was done twice. It's not Microsoft October 47 puts. My apologies. It was the Microsoft. You can see right here. It's the Microsoft 430 call. So again, my apologies on there. I'll speak to the marketing department on that image. That's my fault. It was duplicate. But uh, 560 puts, XLF puts, we did Microsoft calls, NVIDIA calls, Palantir calls, Silver calls. Six for six. That gets us 15 out of 20 for the month of October. A uh, couple of reversals that happened to us, uh, unfortunately. One was AMD with the ASML headlines that came in. Uh, Google hit in the money. This was on the 11th when it expired. On the 14th of October, it hit in the money. So we were just a tad early. NASDAQ, QQQ, and Tesla calls. Those were carryovers from September. And the JP Morgan calls four times were hit in the money. So you can see how very close we are to pretty much, pretty much perfect. If Google, or excuse me, Alphabet, if we would have just got one more week, we catch that. If we didn't have an ASML headline, uh, again, not going to blame. It's just what happened. We would have caught that as well because we also hit green on that one. And JP Morgan hit, hit in the money four times. So uh, kind of annoying to see that, especially with October. It's just kind of usually the case. Get a very shaky market. But so far, since really that JPM trade, we've been doing exceptionally well. We're talking about almost 10 in a row. I know JPM is right in the middle of that. But you could see 10 of the last 11 trades um, have hit. And about, what, 13 out of the last 14 have hit. So really good stuff to come back, you know, get that momentum in our favor and see what we get moving forward. So what I really want to do this week is end it on a very strong note. So we'll see what we get uh, as October 31st is a Thursday, Halloween. So great stuff this week. I want, That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a streak. I wanted us to get that really good confidence going into a very bullish November. So very, very exciting stuff. Uh, Thanks to all the members who have joined the Option Signals Group. We had a lot of newbies, and I just want to say thank you, and I hope you are enjoying so far. Uh, okay, so what we're moving on to now, let's go and talk about the risks for the market. Oh, we got a future trade open. Uh, looks like Nikki is moving the stop loss on NASDAQ long. We got in at 615, and this is the beautiful part about a team. I don't have to stare at this. Nick is watching it very, very closely. He just moved the stop to 20. 
uh, from the entry of 615. This is NASDAQ futures now trading at 40. So the members are up 25 points. He also put his futures video up as well for our futures members. We got some great stuff uh, as freebies as well for our server members who may not be paid members. We have a freebie watch list that's coming out tomorrow morning. I believe it should be posted. Uh, and also this video is for everybody. So just wanted to go over that with you. So let's talk about the risks to the market. I'll go and bring up NASDAQ futures. All right. So risk of the market, I wrote this down. Earnings. We're going to talk about earnings here. We've got jobs report this week. Big time. Big, very, very, very important. Uh, the big boys all report this week. So let's go over the ones that are the most important. Let's go ahead and bring up the server. All right. We're going to go with here to earnings calendar and look what we got here. All right. Let's go ahead and focus on the ones that are, I guess, I can't say the most important, but the stuff, the ones that everyone's going to be watching. So let's start with two that maybe not be talked about as much, but I think there's some opportunity there. It's PayPal and SoFi. So that's going to be on Tuesday morning. Let's take a look at it. We'll start with SoFi. All right. We'll go to the daily and give us a look here. 1172 is that high here. We do have a breakout out of this channel. Very similar to Tesla is what we had. Uh, if you guys saw Tesla last week, they went ahead and soared post earnings. Massive short squeeze. Unbelievable move. Did not trade that, but well done to those who did. Uh, 1172 on SoFi is what I'm looking for. The only concern I have here is this gap to fill at 1067. So if this can fill, let's say, possibly tomorrow ahead of earnings, yeah, possibly you can go ahead and buy cost 1172. Worst case scenario, you have a downside gap at 909. Again, it's really hit or miss. They can beat on earnings, they can beat on revenue, and the stock may fall. They can uh, miss on revenue, miss on guidance, and the stock goes up really depends on the reaction. That's what you're really trading. But there's two levels of, uh, of emphasis here. You got to retest possibly at 1017. And then you have the breakout at 1172. If we go to the weekly, you can see that 1172 gives us the breakout. And yes, we will continue higher to the 16s. It really depends on that guidance, in my opinion, if we're going to get that leg higher. Um, if rates were to go down ahead of it, ahead of the SoFi report, I expect SoFi to move higher. So again, not trading it yet, but I would be bullish on SoFi. Personally, that's my call. Let's go to PayPal. All right, PayPal. I know we have a gap to fill here. Very close. Got a gap here at 84.69. 82 has been a tough one to break. If you break 82, then I'm looking for 84.62. That is the gap to fill. I would be bullish on PayPal. It looks like it's set up to break out here with the only downside risk here right around 7404 for a daily gap. All right, let's see the other ones here. Okay, so then we move on on Tuesday that same uh, afternoon, and we're going to go ahead and start with AMD and Alphabet. All right, let's take a look at it. AMD, we're sitting right at the 50 and right at the 100. You're right here and down this channel. AMD right now, kind of this upward channel breakdown. It's got to hold right around 150 or so, but if it does break below this moving average here, 140 is in play. So looking at AMD here, again, depending on tomorrow, what if we gap up? Again, we do have futures running higher right now. So this could change. If this breaks above 163.35 or so, that's the 200 day. But if we break down below 155, looks like 140.94. So it really just depends on tomorrow. If we can get above 170, yes, we have momentum back to 175. That would be the alert for the breakout. But again, it seems like it's kind of hanging on by a thread. I don't like this candle either. If it breaks down, 140 will be it. I'm going to have to be a little bearish on AMD with earnings just based on what it is currently. Now, again, that could change. But uh, let's just say PayPal and SoFi are to me a better setup than AMD currently. All right, let's go to Alphabet, Google. The one that has been not nice to us lately. All right, you got a wedge breakout here. You got a gap to that's gap that's been filled. You got to get above 170 before you do anything. There is a gap to fill here at 183. If you can get above 170.58, I feel like I've been here before. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for the break of 171. And if it does, we can go ahead and target up to 183. The best trade, maybe if you do break above 171, would be right around the 180 calls. That's what I'd be looking for. Possibly look to buy some time. Um, if it does break down, you got to get below 162.46. That's your 200 day and you're back down to 152. So this is going to be your level of support. 162.64, 171 breakout above the 100 gets you back above this channel here. 
that wedge breakout keeps the uh, keeps the setup intact and you have a gap to fill here, I'd be bullish Google into earnings. But again, we'll keep an eye at, as we see how the market conditions play out. We don't have to fill it ahead of earnings, but we'll see what we get. Uh, let's see another one. Uh, Caterpillar and let's see. Let's just do Caterpillar. All right, Caterpillar. We do have a gap to fill here at 374.99. If we break below 380, that is going to come next. Here's the concern. If it just tags 380, it could just be a retest of the breakout and a pop higher. So we're looking for 375.33 to fill first. And if it does, I want to buy the dip here because this has been a golden cross really since last July. It's been absolutely spectacular and it's been very, very nice to trade because it's been upward very nicely. And it's been doing kind of textbook moves, except for this earnings report here where we fell in July, but it has been breaking out very, very nice for Caterpillar. So I'd wait for the retest. Uh, I would say wait for the 380 level to break, maybe catch that move downward ahead of earnings so that gap to 375 and then I would be long so it really depends um if you hold 380 I'd be long if you break above 403 I'd be long but if you break below 373 that's when things might be a concern to 350 I think you stay bullish caterpillar it looks like a great setup okay so let's see who the next one is all right so we're gonna move to we'll do four of them for this one let's start with Microsoft that's gonna be on Wednesday after the bell and Microsoft, we traded many times. We're sitting on the 100-day moving average currently. Now the question remains, up or down? This is the concern. We're getting very close to a death cross here. If you break below 417.71, you got it down to 390 as your next move down. Similar candle to AMD. Looks like we're hitting some resistance right around 433. I hate to be this guy, but... If we do break below 420, I'm going to be bearish on one of my favorite companies, Microsoft, down to 385. And 385 would be a nice sale for those who want to buy it. Doesn't mean it's going to go bankrupt. Doesn't mean it's going to go to zero. I just have a bearish bias on Microsoft short term uh, in comparison to the other ones. But again, you got to break below 420. Uh, it just seems that we keep just hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. But that might be support. And then if we do go higher, you got up to 500. If you can break above 446, as you can see in the screen in front of you. All right, let's go and take a look at Meta. Meta is a name that we've traded before, and we traded puts on this one. Still the downward channel. I mean, still have the upward channel, uh, just right in the middle of everything. So, what are we looking for? 550 support. That's what we're looking for. Um, but it seems that we're just right in the middle. If you break above 585, yeah, 600 to 625, it's going to be way expensive. I'm going to say neutral on Meta because you're kind of in between of this channel here, like right smack dab. I mean, it's head or tails. I'd skip this one. Uh, if it moves higher, great. We know the NASDAQ will move higher with it. Maybe Google with it as well. But uh, 625 would be next resistance with 550 being your next support. All right. What's the next one? We also have Coinbase. All right, what's Coinbase got for us? It's holding the 200-day next level support right around 188.33 for downside. That is your 20-day moving average, but we are setting up a possible inverse head and shoulders. Got to get above 225 to go long here, and if you do, you got as high as 275. So what's my leaning? I think uh, Coinbase goes higher, uh, but it has to hold that 200-day. But I think uh, with this 20MA crossing above the 50, it seems like the momentum is to push higher on Coinbase. I definitely have a better view on Coinbase than Meta, at least on the technical terms this week. So I think Coinbase goes higher. Uh, Robinhood. Robinhood has been on fire lately. They announced that they're going to have some futures trading. And you can see kind of that upward trend line there. I mean, just an upward line. And then it broke down, bounced, retested around that 15 level. How much more do we have to go? Right, night, right around 29.14, a lot of price to perfection, uh, momentum up higher. I think that uh, Robinhood kind of runs out of gas near 30, may tag it, and then pull us back. I would say 24 retest on Robinhood, so I'd be bearish on Robinhood. Uh, really why I believe it's overbought. Let me just make sure and see the RSI on it. Yeah, not too terrible. Right around 66. Yeah, I can't say it's super overbought, but it's getting there. And uh, with that being said, it's kind of like Tesla was super oversold in that short squeeze. I think Hood's going to be some profit taking coming up. 
with earnings. So I'd be bearish on that one. Now, again, these are just my calls. I don't know what the earnings are going to happen, but just based on the technicals, this is what I got. All right, next we're going to do Uber and then we'll do Amazon and we'll do Apple and we'll do Intel. How's that? Uh, the energy companies are coming up, but really that's really based on the oil, oil stocks, <clears throat> not oil stocks, crude oil, uh, crude oil uh, commodities or prices down 4% on crude oil because Israel's not hitting Iran's oil fields. I, that, that was the headline that came out. So I guess I'll skip those two. We're going to skip. We're going to stick with Amazon, Apple and Intel. And that's Thursday after the bell. And then we have Uber. So we'll start with Uber first. Uber is Thursday again before the bell. We're going to go ahead and remove this study. All right. Okay. Oh, we had a retest here of 79. So what I'm looking for here is a break above 82. You have up to 87 to 90 for calls. Uh, we just filled that gap down here. You have a gap up and another gap up. So actually I would be setting up for bullish because we just retested that golden cross and it still has more momentum higher and it is above or well, right near the 20 day. So I'd be bullish Uber above 8203, go to 87. So let's see if it continues higher. Amazon. Amazon was a name I was looking to go long. It tagged my alert, but I skipped it. So 191.68. If that breaks, we're looking for 195. 195 breaks, you're going to get to 200. I think 200 is where this, it gets sold. That's been that kind of peak for the stock. Um, we'll see if maybe earnings gets us above the top, above there, excuse me. Again, still the 50 above the 200. So at least that's good news. The 20 day moving average is above the 100 day moving average. That's good as well. Not the best daily candle above 191.68, maybe 192. The 195 calls would be it. I would be bullish on Amazon. Let's go and take a look at Apple. Apple above the 20, uh, kind of just sideways chop action, kind of right in the middle of it. What do I expect? I think that we just stay in this channel. Nothing really changes between 237 and 220. I think at worst case scenario, you get to 220. Best case scenario, you get to 240 and they reject it. I'd be rather neutral on Apple as of this speaking here because anything could change, at least in terms of future side, Monday morning, what have you. But I'd be a neutral on Apple. I don't expect much there unless we start really breaking out. Um, and again, I don't expect that ahead of earnings. Uh, Intel, I do expect this gap to be filled. Maybe they have some good news. Maybe the board starts talking about cost cutting, selling off some assets, something along those lines. 2551 is what we want for a break. If that does happen, we got up to 28 for calls. I think Intel goes higher. Uh, it is fighting that 20 day moving average, possible bull flag on the short term. Well, here on the daily, excuse me, not short term. And I'll show it to you guys. Possible bull flag. Again, all this could change with terms of earnings. I, I don't know what they're going to say, but at least on a technical basis, it looks like Intel is going to go higher. So you can see that flag set up. Maybe we get to 2888 again, all dependent on the reaction. It's very tough to predict reactions. So we will see what we get. Um, that is what we have, at least in terms of earnings that are, I guess, the ones that stand out for right now. A uh, bunch of names. SoFi, PayPal. Again, I'd be a little bit bullish. AMD, I'm a little bearish on it. Alphabet, I'm bullish on. Caterpillar, bullish on. Microsoft, I'm bearish on. Meta, I'm neutral. Coinbase, I'm bullish on. Robinhood, I'm bearish on. Uber, I'm bullish on. Amazon, bullish. Apple, I'm neutral. And Intel, I'd be bullish on. That's just what I'm looking at. Again, all of that could change uh, with tomorrow. And who knows? For all we know, we limit up tomorrow. For all we know, we tank tomorrow. All the stocks. Anything could happen with headlines. But as of this current recording, that is what I'm looking at. Now, let's see what we get. NASDAQ futures check real quick. Uh, 20,650. If that starts breaking out, looks like 20,700 is coming. Uh, in regards to the trades that are open, I'm going to send out a game plan to our option signals members. They'll have exactly what's happening tomorrow, uh, because then we'll get some pre-market, uh, prices. All of this right now is all futures related. And again, that could change overnight, especially with the London open at 3 AM. So the key this week is going to be the earning reports from the mega tech companies, Tesla, Netflix did their thing. Stock went higher. So now we're starting to get a little bit of expectation of bullishness. Uh, did we hit a possible double top? One and two. We'll see. We're in that zone. We do have no Fed speakers this week. We do not have Fed speakers. Just want to make sure of that and clarify. And we have some jobs numbers. Jolt's jobs. That could change things. 
Um, that's on Tuesday. Uh, ADP, that's private jobs report. That's on Wednesday. We got a GDP number on, on Wednesday as well. Core PCE, that's an inflationary reading from the for the Fed. Uh, unemployment claims, we get that every Thursday. We had higher, less unemployment claims uh, this past week. And we have the non-farm payroll report. That's going to come on Friday at 8.30 in the morning, first Friday of the new month. We'll see how the jobs number hits. If the jobs number is too high and there's a lot of people getting hired or new jobs are being added, we're less likely to get a rate cut in November. And if we have job losses, then we're more likely going to cut. So it just really depends. If you want the rate cut, you want people to be not being hired. And if you don't care, you just want the economy to hum, then you want jobs to be plentiful. But again, that's what's going to affect the market the most. Earnings first, stock specific, obviously during the week, but Friday with the labor number, that's going to be important because if that number is too high, the market's going to get spooked, the market's going to get sold off because they're not going to get the rate cuts that they want. So that's what we got. Uh, watch list will be posted later this evening for our signal members. Futures video has already been posted. Nick is already in a trade. They are green. Great job. Uh, public watch list, uh, which is the freebies, what we're watching for the week, three stocks. That'll be posted later this evening. And in this video for everybody as well, podcast is up. So thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate your time. We went over a ton of stuff. I uh, just want to check into my guys. Okay, they got plus 20 on, uh, what is it? On the futures trade on NASDAQ. Well done. Well done, Nick and the team. All right, we'll go and leave it there, guys. Have a great rest of your evening. And I will see you guys tomorrow on the GAR Capital Discord server. If you guys are interested in joining, www.gar.capital. Join into this community, full service, uh, signals, uh, answering questions, and teaching you daily. We'd love to do it. We hope to see you tomorrow. Cheers, all.